everyone. I'm Nagisa Tamorian. I'm part of our Umbrella product team. Welcome to our session today, See and Protect Users and Endpoints Everywhere. We have a great session planned for all of you today, and we're going to be talking about how you can improve your security posture um, by really um, you know, improving your protection for both your users and your devices across your network with an integrated security experience. We are going to kick off our session today by taking a look at, you know, what's happening um, in 2019 in terms of, you know, significant security shifts. Um, in particular, we're going to be talking about, you know, how much more is happening off network in terms of, you know, more roaming users, um, more branch offices, and, you know, the challenges these, these um, shifts present with getting visibility into what your users are doing um, and also what's happening on their endpoints. We're also going to talk about, you know, how um, Cisco can help improve your visibility by providing that better protection um, for your endpoints with a first line and last line of defense. And this is really going to help you to um, proactively prevent attacks and also to detect and respond to attacks um, before damage can be done. From there, we'll take a quick look at some customer examples and, you know, how um, customers are, are using um, Cisco Umbrella and Cisco AMP to um, improve their visibility uh, for, their, for their users and some of the specific results um, they've been seeing after using these products for some time. This is an interactive session, so feel free to post any questions in the chat, um, and we will save some time at the end um, to answer them live and go through your questions. All right, I'm joined today by Neil Patel. Neil is a colleague of mine on um, the Cisco Advanced Malware Protection Team. Uh, we refer to um, Advanced Malware Protection as, as AMP for short, so you'll you'll, you'll hear us, um, you know, saying AMP a couple times today. Uh, Neil, welcome to the session. We're so happy to have you. To be here, I'm looking. Forward to the session. Awesome. Very happy to have Neil here today. We are going to learn a lot from Neil. Okay, so let's let's start the conversation um, by talking a bit about market trends. Um, so I have some brand new research to share with all of you guys. I'm very excited about that. Um, so let's first start by talking about how IT was built. Um, so going back several years, um, you know, this, this won't come as a surprise to all of you that you know a lot was um, happening on premise. So you had your your desktop, your critical infrastructure, um, your business apps all behind the firewall. And what's what's changed in recent years is just so much more is happening off network. So we're seeing that more and more users are are now roaming. So we have more roaming laptops. We have um, you know more branch offices, and these branch offices are now shifting to direct internet access rather than backhauling traffic. In addition, we're seeing, you know, so much more growth with SaaS apps. Um, so users are, are um, adopting these apps like Box, Salesforce, G Suite at a very rapid rate. And what's, what's particularly, um, you know, noteworthy here is that these users are able to connect directly to these apps um, when they need to get work done, uh, when they're off-prem um, off and roaming, and there's no need for them to, um, you know, sign in to VPN in order to um, connect to these apps. So, of course, that presents uh, new security challenges for all of us. So, looking at, you know, the, the impact of these shifts, 
um, to security and, and taking a, a closer look at the impact. Um, so we're seeing that about half of the workforce is currently mobile, and that number is going to continue to rise. And that's you know a very significant chunk of the workforce. We're seeing more people, um, you know, working from home, working from a, a combination of, of branch offices and headquarters, as well as working from other locations. Um, so a strong majority of the workforce is now considered roaming. Um, in addition, according to a, a recent survey by ESG, the analyst firm, they conducted a, a survey in 2019, we're seeing that 85% of corporate users are bypassing VPN. So that's another number that's continuing to um, increase year over year. We're also seeing that there's, um, you know, this ongoing um, increase in SaaS app adoption. So we have 70% um, of users um, currently adopting SaaS apps, and that's, um, that's actually what we're anticipating in, in two years. So the number right now is a bit lower than that. And then another interesting area that we're seeing um, with regards to um, lots of activity and growth is shift to DIA. So we're seeing that 79% of, of organizations are shifting, you know, some or all of their branch offices um, to DIA, so direct to internet. What we're, what we're also seeing that's very interesting is that organizations that are highly distributed are at 100% DIA and that they are, um, you know, moving at a much faster rate with their adoption um, and they're about three times, doing this at about three times the pace of their counterparts. So what does um, all of this mean for, um, for all of you? It means that, you know, basically security needs to um, adapt and evolve um, to provide that, that visibility that's needed um, to protect users who are roaming and to get that visibility into traffic that is um, direct to the Internet because those traditional network and web security models don't provide protection um, for roaming, roaming users and, and folks that are working off-prem. Okay, so another interesting area to look at is that given that more is happening off-network, um, this really impacts the top um, security challenges that organizations have. So because we're seeing so much more um, folks that are roaming, we, because we're seeing so much more usage of um, these cloud apps, we're seeing that um, organizations are reporting that mobile devices and cloud data are two of the areas that are the most challenging to defend. In addition, um, right up there alongside those, those um, top two areas, user behavior is another big one. Um, because these phishing campaigns are becoming um, so much more sophisticated uh, and so much more likely to look legitimate that even if your employees are cyber aware and even if they know to be um, cautious with links that they are clicking on, um, they are bound to fall into some of the traps that these um, attackers are, are laying out. So I also want to share with you guys um, some of the latest trends on cyber attacks. Um, so this is also part of that same um, ESG report that I referenced earlier. So these are brand new numbers. Um, so we're seeing that across North America and European organizations, that 74% of organizations surveyed have experienced some type of cyber attack in the last 12 months. 
We're also seeing that, um, you know, the percentage of attacks um, and the volume of attacks is higher for, for North America um, than it is for Europe, and that is consistent with you know, research that we do internally at Cisco Umbrella across, um, you know, various attack types such as crypto mining, we are seeing that North America is a particularly um, hot target for attacks. In addition, it's, you know, very important to note that 68% um, of organizations surveyed have experienced a compromise of a remote office or a roaming user. Um, so what we can take away from this is that, you know, those roaming users and those branch offices are more vulnerable, um, you know, for attack. Um, and attackers are really taking advantage of um, the fact that that you know those users typically don't have as robust of protection. So that's a little bit about um, you know what's happening across the market today. Um, now I'm going to hand it over to Neil, and he's going to introduce us to. Bob, the security guy, and talk to us about how Cisco can help um, improve your visibility um, and improve your protection for your roaming users and devices. Over to you, Neil. Thank you, Nikisa. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, Bob. So most of you either know Bob, relate to Bob on some level, or have experienced life as Bob does. Um, Bob is our go-to security uh, administrator. He's a security analyst. He's also a you know, network administrator. He does pretty much everything to make sure the, the organization is safe. And as you can tell, he's always you know, fighting an uphill battle. You know, his, his hair is on fire. The network's not working. Something's down. There's some breach coming in. And he is constantly struggling for visibility. He's always looking to figure out what users are doing. You know, like Nagisa said, the shift in the real world is that direct internet access is a thing that's happening at a very fast pace because of cloud apps. The businesses are changing. Everybody is accessing everything from wherever they are. So that visibility he doesn't have anymore is, is really hurting him. And, and second, you know, there is so many people in his organization that it's hard to keep track. It's hard to kind of, you know, making sure that everybody's protected on and off network. And finally, when you have this kind of scalability issue, when you have this issue of you're not being able to see everything, it's harder for you to act fast. Bob's always crunching through data. He's always looking at the information, trying to build correlations, trying to find information that's useful. And he just constantly is struggling with this. It's just an uphill battle when you don't have the right solutions in place to give you that visibility, to give you that control over your roaming users, over your on-premise users, just kind of everything all together becomes harder. So what is, what is our approach? What is Cisco's approach to this, right? Um, the goal is really protecting not just, you know, endpoints or devices or physical pieces of hardware, but also users as a, a persona, as an entity, right? You know, when we talk about security, um, nine times out of 10, the vulnerability is between what the keyboard and the chair, right? It's that human element that is creating a lot of security gaps and vulnerabilities. So we need to make sure that we're protecting not just our endpoints, but also our users. How do we approach that? Two, two products, two solutions, one kind of, um, well, actually two products, one solution. Uh, it starts with protecting the devices, right? The physical hardware, the um, you know systems that are connected to your network, with next generation endpoint security. You know, being able to identify that small subset of attacks that really matters to you. You know, all of the noise that comes through the 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 riffraff of you know common threats, things that are already known as malicious, shouldn't be bothering you. They shouldn't really be taking up your time. You should be made aware of them, but they should be blocked. They should be protected against. What you can focus on is that very targeted 1%, that really tight-knit threat that is designed for your environment or very specifically targeted to a scenario or use case that you may have implemented. And then also, like I was saying, the other side of it, protecting users with Secure Internet Gateway, right? When I said that that vulnerability lies between the keyboard and the chair, it really does. You know, what's prompting that malware to come onto the endpoint? What's prompting that, you know, false form 
uh, or a key logger to run on the computer. It's, it's a link that the user clicked or an attachment that they opened or a USB drive that they plugged in and launched a file off of. All of this stuff is based on the user interacting with the system trying to accomplish something. So being able to stop and contain that kind of behavior by controlling the DNS traffic stops a lot of those threats right out of the gate. You don't have to worry about going through the triage process for something that was canned or stopped right when you started the interaction with it. So what does this mean in the, the real world? Right? So what does this look like to you? Um, it's preventing you from attacks that are kind of listed here, kind of vulnerabilities that bring problems in your environment, things that are doing data exfiltration, um, ransomware, uh, fileless malware, you know, being able to approach and, and identify fileless malware more accurately without, you know, chasing your tail when you see some sort of anomalous behavior. Phishing attempts, like I said, right at the DNS layer, being able to stop that request from going out before it even brings bad software onto the endpoint. And then we'll go a little bit more into this, but crypto mining as well. It's one of those things where Um, crypto mining is one of those things where you have this potentially non-malicious um, utility or application running, but it could be running with malicious intent or it could be doing something non-approved. You shouldn't be running it in your environment. So this is all broken down into approaching, protecting the users and devices in three parts. The first is prevention. So this is making sure that Stuff that should not be getting in, stuff that is known bad, things that are identifiable as malicious should just be stopped right out of the gate. Umbrella blocking those malicious requests um, before data is even passed, right? You don't want anything going out or anything coming back down. Before that data is passed, Umbrella will terminate the connection. You won't be able to make a connection to that real bad domain. And then AM for endpoints blocking the files and malware at initial inspection. The moment we see a file write to disk, the moment we see a file be you know on the computer in some way, shape, or form, it's execute, interact with something else, we know it's bad, we kill it, we stop it, we quarantine the file, we terminate the process. Just making sure that we are taking care of a vast majority of the common, everyday known, made aware of threats at the first possible stage so you don't have to spend time chasing your wheel, uh, chasing your tail. The second piece is obviously, okay, that is not a perfect science. And if anybody tells you that they're going to be able to block every attack out of the gate, you know, it, it's going to be a lie because security is cat and mouse. We find a way to block it. The attacker is going to find a way to get around it. So being able to detect and identify um, malicious behavior and intent is just as important as being able to prevent it out the gate. Because when you have very strong systems that can identify and um, pinpoint an attack based on the interaction that an endpoint has had with specific domains, with specific IP addresses, and build relationships between that and known threats or malicious intent, Umbrella will be able to identify you know, potential malware on that computer. Same story for AMP for endpoints, right? Monitoring actual file activity and behavior on the endpoint. How are these files interacting with each other? How is this system process interacting with this web connection? How are these processes launching one another? And if those systems or if those kinds of relationships identify as malicious, you know, as the behavior is being malicious, then we can identify it as a threat versus just, you know, I don't know what's going on here or just having something run rampant in your environment because it wasn't caught at initial inspection because there was some, you know, sneaky way of masking what it was. So coming back to the example of the real world, right? Like, well, this is all great in theory when you're talking about it, but how do these two really come into their own as, as, a, as a way to solve a real problem? And that comes right back to crypto mining, right? So just two second background on malicious crypto mining and crypto mining in general, like I said earlier, it may not necessarily be a bad thing. You could be crypto mining for a legitimate purpose, but the idea of in your environment, if there's crypto mining happening, you know, it's chewing resources. And if you're not approving it, or if you're not supposed to be doing it regardless, it could be something malicious if the user doesn't even know it's happening on their back end. 
So the two solutions together kind of give you that full spectrum view or excuse me, full spectrum control over malicious crypto mining because you have two different kinds, right? It could be a piece of software that's running on your computer directly talking to some um, uh, coin hives or something to do that mining or you have just a, a, a miner that lives in your browser as an extension or part of a web page that's just in the background running, right? Both of those solutions call for a very pointed prevention mechanism and together AMP for endpoints and Umbrella give you that. AMP giving you that software-based control. You can see that file that's executing. You can see the behavior of that file. And when we see that malicious crypto mining activity happening, we're going to terminate the process. And Umbrella being able to stop that crypto mining communication from going up so you can't you know, pass that, that calculated data. You can't do the actual work to mine the coin. And then finally, when all of this has gone through, right, we've gone through the initial stage of prevention, we've detected a threat, anything that may have fallen through past prevention because of some sneaky malicious methods, um, all of it comes down to, all right, what do I do to respond? You know, AMP for endpoints and Umbrella um, are going to do everything they possibly can to quarantine, stop, and isolate whatever bad behavior was detected or identified. But that's obviously not the whole story, right? If you're not actively taking an approach to respond to the threat that, that was identified, you're not getting to the root cause. You're not stopping it from happening again. So Umbrella will give you all of that rich intelligence around the domains, IPs, co-occurrences, relationships. You can really get a complete understanding of a, maybe an entire attacker network or framework um, any associated threats um, based on their IPs, files, domains, you can build that kind of tree very quickly to attribute maybe behavior or malicious threat that's in your environment right now to a larger campaign. Or maybe you don't have the insight of a larger campaign, it could be identified as something more targeted. That more information you have, the better you can respond. And the faster you have that information, the faster you can respond. Same story with the for endpoints. From an endpoint specific perspective, right? We can see everything that happened on the endpoint as that computer was trying to make those malicious requests, as that malware was trying to send data up to a CMP channel. And we can roll back to a point in time where, okay, we want to quarantine all of these files that were brought in as a result of my true source, my initial source. So you can do all of that with single clicks and for endpoints, making you able to respond much faster to these threats. And finally, you know, we talked about how you can individually respond and get information out of Umbrella and AMP for endpoints. How do, you, how do you make the story even more compelling? How do you make sure that it happens even faster without any of that manual work? That's Cisco Threat Response. So if you guys aren't already familiar with, um, Cisco Threat Response is, the, is a platform that brings together all of our security products. The idea being we automatically integrate them together so data and context is shared amongst them. So if you are looking for a specific indicator or you're looking to identify a threat as it pertains to your environment across all of your Cisco security architecture, it aggregates, correlates all of that intelligence and it gives it to you in one place, one view, as well as a live map of how everything is related to each other. So you can almost instantly understand what a threat looks like in your environment, how it relates between files, IPs, domains, computers that were impacted, networks that were seen going out to those domains, IPs. So that way, you don't have to spend time doing it manually. You're not going into platforms, looking for information, finding the link between them to identify the, the action a threat took or a threat actor took in your environment. The goal really being integrating things together in a meaningful way, make sure that you can do everything a lot faster. So that brings us right back to Bob, right? Before this, Bob was struggling for that, struggling to bring data together, struggling to prevent threats, you know, mining through alerts, making sure these are, you know, not important, these are more important, these are already taken care of. With the protected, you know, user and endpoint solution together in AMP and Umbrella, 
not only does Bob have all the information he needs, he can respond much faster, doesn't have to sit here, try and figure out what alerts mean. He knows that the alert has all this context. He knows this is a relationship between you know, the threat and the file and the IP and the endpoint. And the most important thing really to Bob is he doesn't have to go looking around for some crazy security you know, guru that knows every little inner working of, of malware or threats or you know, the black hat side of the world. They can, you know, Bob can make the most of the talent that he has in his organization, the talent that he has to work with because you are letting the platforms, the security solutions, the Cisco security tools do the heavy lifting for you. You're able to make sure that you're getting the most out of your investment when you bring solutions like this together. So with that, I'm going to pass it right back to Nikisa, and she'll kind of talk about this stuff in the real world in action um, with some of our customers. Awesome. Thank you, Neil. Love that overview. I'm so happy to see Bob making use of all the great integrations we have at Cisco to make his life easier. Okay. Just one moment. Okay, so we're going to take a look now at um, some customer examples. I mentioned earlier that we've had a lot of customers who um, have had success in particular using AMP and Umbrella together. We actually see quite a bit of our customers um, purchasing both of these products together. So let's take a look at a couple um, specific customers and um, some customer quotes. Um, so we have Gareth, who is the um, global cybersecurity team leader at ARA, and um, what he said about AMP and Umbrella is that um, we were able to redesign how we permitted Internet access. Using Umbrella in conjunction with AMP for endpoints allowed us to safely connect directly to the Internet. We also enabled off-network protection using the roaming client on every machine, desktop, and laptop, which is important since 70% of our workers are mobile. So great protection um, for their um, roaming users, which was a strong majority of their overall workforce. We also have a um, quote from Access Financial. So this is their um, director of IT security. And um, what he said is, without Umbrella and AMP for endpoints, detection and recovery would literally cost us months of work and frustration. Um, so there's a lot of value when you take these two solutions together and you integrate them with a product like Cisco Threat Response, um, which Neil was talking about, that allows you to aggregate the intelligence from you know, not only your endpoints and, and all of your devices in your network, but also what, um, you know, specific domains um, and IPs are your users connecting to. So when you want to research a set of observables that are tied to a particular attack, you can get that full visibility, you know, across, um, you know, what's happening on the Internet and across those devices that can really help you to, um, you know, detect and respond to attacks faster. So before we open it up for questions, I want to share with you all um, a special offer that we have available for all of you. As a thank you for attending our webinar today, um, you are all going to receive a free 14-day trial for Cisco Umbrella. Um, you can use Umbrella to protect your users from going to bad places on the Internet, and you can literally get up and running in minutes and get protection across your entire enterprise, including roaming users. Um, it is the easiest security product you'll ever deploy, um, but you don't have to take my word for it. You can give it a try with our, our free trial and start getting visibility into what all of your users are doing um, and be able to protect them. Um, so to sign up for Umbrella, it's literally three easy steps. You just sign up at signup.umbrella.com. We put that link in the, in the chat. You point your DNS to our resolvers, and that's it. You're done. Um, you're going to start getting visibility into what all of your users are doing. 
Okay, um, we also have available for all of you a free trial for AMP. We'll put that link in the chat as well um, so you can start protecting your endpoints as well and you know eliminate blind spots and discover those unknown threats across your endpoints. With that, I'm going to open it up for questions. Please feel free to post any questions you have in the chat now. Um, I'll get us started with a couple of the questions that have um, come in so far. So I'm going to invite Neil back on to help us um, answer these questions. Um, so first question for you, Neil, is what do you recommend for protection against fileless malware? Mm, very good question. Uh, so fileless malware is one of those tricky um, tricky threats to, to approach because traditional endpoint solutions, right, are focused and centered around uh, files and, and processes on the computer. The idea behind fileless malware is it's something that lives as a part of a trusted process, be it Microsoft Word, F Firefox, Chrome, some known process that is trusted on the computer. So that inherently makes it more challenging to detect. So there isn't really a silver bullet to the solution. You have to really think about multiple ways where you can identify malicious behavior coming off of an endpoint. Um, so in the context of what we've been talking about, you have a solution like AMP for endpoints that is looking at the behavior on the endpoint to potentially identify a, a trusted process breaking out of its memory space to try and access something it shouldn't be, like PowerShell or the command line. And then you have Umbrella that can actually identify malicious comms coming off of the computer. So regardless of whether the malicious process is a resident in memory of a trusted process or if it's a file, um, Umbrella is still going to identify a bad piece of communication. So at the end of the day, the piece of fileless malware, that threat, is going to actually have to call home or go somewhere to do some work, whether it's data exfiltration, exchanging a key for encryption, whatever it may be. So having that kind of two-pronged approach to monitor traffic outbound off of your endpoints very easily with Umbrella and monitoring behavior on the computers themselves with AMP for endpoints makes it a really good solution completely to cover your bases for fileless mm -hmm. malware. Yep, great point, Neil. Layered approach with security is always smart. Okay, so next question, what is required to deploy Umbrella? Yeah, very, very good. And so Umbrella is actually extremely simple. Um, as Nagisa was saying, it really doesn't take much to, to get Umbrella going. Uh, you need a DNS resolver or uh, some sort of server on your local that you can direct to Umbrella, or you can just manually push out to make all of your endpoints go out to uh, Umbrella via you know any connect uh, module via the roaming client it's so many different deployment options so easy to do it's just really fast change of dns settings and boom you're good to go we also have integrations with cisco hardware so if you have an isr sitting at your edge cisco isr if you have a cisco meraki mr device sitting at the edge even easier just change that device to relay dns traffic up to umbrella so super simple super easy um I just want to bring up really quickly, uh, iOS as well, it's always a challenge for folks protecting iOS devices as they roam because once they hop off onto LTE or some public Wi-Fi, it's hard to control that network traffic. We also have Cisco Security Connector for iOS specifically, which allows us to get all of that DNS traffic and visibility into the app behavior, um, whether you're on network, off network, LTE, roaming, wherever you may be. So that's definitely a cool, uh, cool plus there too. Yes, absolutely. So we have time for one more question. And this last question is, does AMP cover my antivirus needs? Uh, yeah, again, very good question. Uh, so traditionally with endpoint security, you know, the first thing that comes to mind for most people is antivirus, right? That's the, you know, that's what has been ingratiated into our minds since the dawn of time. Um, today, antivirus is something that is one of those necessities but it's a very small part of the bigger story. Um, to answer that question very briefly and directly, yes, um, AMP for Endpoints will cover that solution that you need for antivirus. Um, we do have you know, AV comparative results for uh, you know, third-party testing on how effective we are versus competitors, things like that. But um, to answer that question, yes, absolutely, Cisco AMP for Endpoints will cover your antivirus needs. 
Awesome. Thank you, Neil, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Hope you found this session informative, and also hope that you give our free trials a shot. We'd love to hear what you think of both AMP and Umbrella. Um, so that's all we have planned today. Have a great rest of your day, and thank you again for attending.